This is Stephen Loomis. Today we're going to talk about how to input locale data into the CLDR survey tool. But first, what is a locale? Wherever you live, all computer devices use locale data to represent dates and times, numbers, personal names and such in a format that represents your own cultural and linguistic preferences. CLDR is Unicode's Common Locale Data Repository. It's the largest and most extensive standard repository of locale data. As such, it has become the on-ramp to getting your language represented on digital devices. There's four steps to this process. First, contribute data using the survey tool. Secondly, check the data carefully. Third, the data is then exported and becomes a part of the CLDR repository. Finally, CLDR data is available to be used on devices around the world. Great. Let's log in to the survey tool. Bring up your email client and look for the email that has your password in it. Don't share this link, but Save it and bookmark the link. Now we wait briefly for the survey tool to start up. Let's take a tour of some of the parts of this survey tool screen. In the top corner, we can verify that we are logged in. And we can see controls for search and also for logging out. Over in the top corner, you can verify what version and what status is. There's triple line with a menu, and then a very important menu, the coverage menu. You'll want to start out at basic. Once you've completed all the items at basic, then you can move on. Next, there's a link to instructions and also a message area. This will have announcements later in the cycle. Finally, there's a cookie notice and a link to the privacy policy. Next, I'd like to draw your attention to the left-hand sidebar. Mouse on the left side to get to it. On this left-hand side, we have a list of languages which this user is authorized to work on. This is the Obolo language. You'll see that this is editable with its language code ANN and a little pencil mark. Nigeria is present, but it's the default content. In other words, content in Obolo is assumed to be valid for Nigeria. Therefore, Nigeria cannot be edited separately. If you have more languages or sublocales, they will show up here. So let's click Obolo and get started. Now we see a page with general information about this locale. As discussed, Obolo is the default content locale for Nigeria. There are other warnings that may be present for a specific locale here. We have more links to additional in instructions, but let's go back to the left-hand sidebar and get started. On this sidebar, we can navigate to various other pieces of the survey tool that have to do with this locale. We have the dashboard, we have reports, forums, and then following that are various types of data. So again, the first link here is the dashboard, which gives you an overview of what needs to be done for the locale. Reports give you various items that let you check at a glance uh, several different types of data. The forum lets you see which posts are being discussed. And core data gives you basic information about the alphabets and the characters used. Locale display names are lists of languages and territories uh, and other similar items. Date and time has to do with different types of calendars. Time zones shows time zones in different regions numbers, and then currencies, give information about different currency types, different types of units. 
There are a lot of different items. Characters gives you annotations for emoji and other characters. And finally, some miscellaneous items. Not all of these will have information at every coverage level. Again, you're going to start out at basic. So let's get started. Let's set to basic. Now that we're at basic level, we're going to start with clicking on the dashboard. And that will bring up an overview of where our uh, locale is at this point. The number of items in the dashboard might seem overwhelming, but don't worry, just take them one at a time. If you're not sure about something, just skip it and come back to it later. You can even post a comment on an item even without voting for it, if you have a question for someone else. Let's continue okay. looking down these items. You'll see there's missing and warning and other categories. We can click on one and it will jump to it in the survey tool edit view. You can see we're on a page called alphabetic information. I'm going to close the dashboard for us temporarily so that we can look at the pieces of the survey tool interface. Before going on, I should mention that the survey tool is a voting system. Even if you're the only person working on the locale, you will be casting votes. You will be reviewing items, voting for an existing item if they are correct, or adding a new item if none of the existing ones is correct. Keep this in mind as we start looking at the pieces of the survey tool window. We're going to go to the section on languages, just so we have a little bit clearer window to work with. We double check to make sure our coverage is at basic. That's why there's only one item on this list. Each row in this page represents a data item. The left column is the code. That's an identifying piece of information for each row. In this case, EN, the language code. These are in sections. There's the English data, which is what you're going to use to compare as you translate. The abstain column is filled in because we have not voted for this item yet. The next sections pertain to which votes we cast. The A column is the approval status. And we can see the approval status of this item is that it is missing. The next column is the winning column. The currently winning item is a missing value. That's why it's in red. We haven't filled this data in yet, but we're going to fill in this code. You'll notice that it's the same as the code EN right now. This is not a good value to vote for. We can mouse over the items and get a little example. That's what the E is telling us. We mouse over, we can see how it's used. English, United States. That's the context of using English. I don't speak the Obolo language, so we're going to pretend that it's Spanish. Not finding any of these candidates valid, I click the plus button to add a new value. Once here, I can click on the copy from English buttons or copy from winning. Or I can just type something in. If I use copy from English, it copies the English value. And we can edit that to make a correction. If we use copy from winning, it'll copy the currently winning value whatever that is. In this case, it's just a raw code. So we're going to just type something else in instead. Once you type something in, hit the Enter key, and it will be recorded as your vote. You don't have to separately vote for something when you add it. You can now see the Inglis is in the winning column. Indicates that it's winning. 
and it's now status approved. You may not have status approved depending on your voter status. Don't worry about that for now. We'll take care of that separately. You can see an example of how it's used under the pop-up example. And you can see that the EN code is now in the losing category. It has a red X on it showing that it should not be voted for since it's just a code. It's not really a translation at this point. Let's pop open the info panel and want to show you some things where the info panel can help you with what you're looking at. There are links to documentation and explanations for the specific item. There's also, in many cases, a Wikipedia abstract with the details about the language or other item being discussed, and there's a link for more details. You can confirm the item that you've currently clicked on and tell you that this one is winning. There's links to errors that apply to the whole locale. Uh, the example copy is there. And also you can see the current status of the voting. Remember, Survey Tool is a voting system. And this particular item, we have cast enough votes to make a change, four votes in this case. Don't worry if you don't seem to have enough votes to make a change. Use the Discuss button to request others to help you or to leave notes about what the problem is. Here you can type in some notes for other vetters in your locale. You can see the forum posts show up down below. And you can also see a little symbol that indicates that there is a post that needs some review. Let's go back to our dashboard and take a look. There's different items here. Once you resolve an item, such as by voting for it here, you'll see it disappears from the dashboard. It's no longer an issue. Some items, however, you won't have enough votes to be able to effect a change. For example, here I'm going to try to update the exemplars to add a character. I don't have to retype all of these characters, so I'm going to use the button winning. At this point, I can simply add the character, in this case the CCD, and let's zoom in and take a look there. So I've added the one character I want to add. Now I can hit enter, and it will be added. You notice there's a red X indicating that we don't have enough votes to actually make a change. Let's pop open the info panel and take a look says, you may post a form entry to flag this item for committee review. So let's do so. Click the Request button and give a message to the technical committee of why this should be included. Give some background information and submit it. You'll see a little flag icon show up. This indicates that is now flagged for TC review. The TC can respond to your post, so check your email. Let's move on. Sometimes you will see errors pop up if you enter in a value that is not correct for this type of data or for the specified format that needs to be filled in. Click on the links for help with inputting the values. The links will be in the error message or in the top right corner in the info panel.
you must correct these problems before submitting that data. Before we proceed, thanks again for putting in information about your language into the survey tool. Let's take a look at some of the reports that you can use to validate the status of your language. On the left sidebar, you can choose the forum entry. That will tell you about items that are waiting for discussion. We can change the filter and we'll be able to see all the items that we have requested changes on. The date-time report gives you an overview of how different formats fit together in your language to produce date and time reports. This gives you, an, at a glance, you can see uh, different issues. You can click the view links and it'll take you right to an item where you can fix that particular issue. Once you've reviewed a report and corrected all the issues, you can mark that everything is fine with the report or the middle option is things aren't fine but you've filed issues or entered votes to request changes. This will clear it from your dashboard. Some additional tips on data entry. You might find entries that have a placeholder. These are these bracket zero, bracket one items. Use the arrow English to fill this in. This case, language so and so. So I change language to idioma and enter it, and you can see how it's used. Idioma ACE. The bracket zero is a placeholder. If you open the info panel, it'll explain to you what these placeholders are and what they refer to, and give an example. Bracket zero is a language code. Some items have multiple um, placeholders. In this case, there's bracket zero, bracket one, for a base language and then modified. In this example, Chinese, simplified Chinese. The examples can help you. You can vote for these if they're appropriate, or you can customize them. Let's say we use semicolon to separate items for this type of a list of languages. Click the plus and click the button to uh, transfer it from the um, English or from the winning value or just type it. Bracket zero, semicolon, bracket one. Now you can see semicolon is used to separate the pieces. We're almost done with our tour, but let's take a peek at that main menu. There might be some options that are of interest. Click on the triple line that is the main menu. And let's take a tour. First, account settings. Here you can see information about your account. If you click the show all users button, you can see other users in your organization. You can lock your account, which would be very sad, but if you have to, that's how you do it. You can import votes, sort of an advanced activity. Recent activity will show you recent things you, were, you voted on. You can download your XML for safekeeping or download a spreadsheet or um, CSV view of your uh, changes. Recent items lets you jump back to something you've been working on recently. Announcements section. This will have site-wide announcements on it. To conclude our tour, it's okay to stay logged into the survey tool, but if you need to, especially on a shared computer, there's a logout button. Well, that does it for now. I hope this has been a helpful introduction to how to use the survey tool.